Before you can use a receiver with a spectrum radio, you have to go through a process called binding, and that basically matches up the receiver to the transmitter. Now, in the DX7, there's also something called model match, so that you can't fly the wrong helicopter with the wrong program dialed up in the transmitter, and that's kind of a nice safety feature. So to bind, first we insert the binding plug into the receiver. It's basically a shorting wire that goes between the negative wire and the signal wire. Then we have some considerations just before we bind because the position that the sticks are in during the binding process determines the fail-safe position that the controls go to if the transmitter loses the signal. Now, you can set the cyclic neutral. That's pretty much a given. The question is, where are you going to set the throttle collective stick? You can set it anywhere you want to. My two suggestions would be either at half stick, which is zero degrees main rotor pitch, or quarter stick or low stick. Both quarter stick and low stick will be minus two and a half degrees of pitch with the setup that we're going to do. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and choose zero degrees main rotor pitch with the idea that at least the rotor disc will kind of be like an umbrella and not get forced into the ground at minus two and a half degrees pitch if I lose the signal. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio around here so that you can see the little button for binding. With the power off, insert the binding plug. Go ahead, power up. The receiver will flash. Now push in the binding button and turn on the transmitter and wait for the receiver to go solid. There, the receiver is solid. Let off of the bind plug. We've got a green light on the back of the transmitter. And now, everything works. Cool. What we can do now is go ahead and power down. Remove the binding plug. And now we're all set to go. Let's set up the ESC. First of all, turn on the transmitter. And with low stick, set low trim. I can't overemphasize how important this is in the setup of an electric helicopter. So here's low trim. Now set the stick to full high. When we plug in the battery pack, that's going to put the ESC into the setup mode. And we'll get a tone that the ESC is reading the transmitter. And then we'll get another tone that leads into setup, where we'll set the high stick parameter, the low stick parameter, and then we'll go in and set all the options, such as brake and electronic timing, battery protection, da 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 So here we go. There's the transmitter. There's the high stick position. It's read that. It's read the low stick position. Now we'll go into the options. The first beep is for brake, and we want the stick low for brake disabled. And we'll get two beeps for electronic timing. We want the stick in the mid position for mid timing. And we'll get three beeps for battery protection. We want that for high cutoff with the stick low. Then for four beeps, we want soft start. And that's with the stick in the mid position. And then for throttle response speed, five beeps. We want the stick in the high position for quick throttle response.
And with that done, we can go back to low stick and unplug the battery pack. And that's all there is to ESC setup. When I was at the board, I was talking about checking the settings of the ESC. So let's say we're ready for a flight. All that we have to do is turn on the transmitter. When we plug in the battery pack, it will give the beeps for each setting. And here we go. First is the brake. Disabled. Mid timing. High voltage cutoff. Helicopter soft start. And quick throttle response speed. So everything is set correctly in the ESC. As we begin the setup, we're going to be using high stick and mid stick and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing that you want to do is make sure that the motor is disconnected from the speed controller. Now, we set up the pitch curve for the normal flight mode and the aerobatic flight modes using the Botita system. But for the initial setup of CCPM, we need everything flushed out or everything zeroed out in the normal pitch curve. So, for low, that's 0%, 0 percent, point 0.1 is inhibited, point 0.2 is 50%, point 0.3 is inhibited, and the high point is 100%. Another thing we have to do is level the helicopter. I like to use a little bubble level laid on top of the elevator servo, but you could also put the level on the tail boom mounting block or on the front servo, whatever, just so you get a relative indication of what's level. Then go ahead and slide some thin pieces of plywood or sheets of paper, whatever. Slide them underneath the skids until the machine is level. That looks pretty good and we can proceed. Before we do anything, we have to make sure that all three servos move in the same direction. So I've put arms on all the servos and I'm going to take a look here. When I increase stick, uh, this one and the elevator servo moves down and the pitch channel 6 moves up so I'll get, go into servo reverse and channel 6 and reverse the pitch and now I've got all three servos moving down together and all three servos moving up together alrighty with the helicopter level and all three servos working in the same direction, set half stick. Half stick is very important for this step because we're going to find where the servo arms are level on the servo. For instance, there, that's too high. Obviously, that's too low. And this is very close to level right there. Now, you could do this with your eyeball, but there's really a better way I've devised a little tool and it basically consists of a piece of piano wire shaped in a U and then I've CA'd a little bubble level to it and the spacing of the piano wire is such that it plugs right into the servo arm. Then all you have to do is dial up your sub trim so I'm sub trim for aileron here and then just work the sub trim until the bubble centers. And there we go, that is perfect. You will certainly see how accurate your servos are when you use this. It looks like I can come back one more. That's very close. And so that's perfect. And my sub trim is right five. So I'm going to do my other two servos. You go ahead and do your servos and I'll be right back. I've leveled all three servo arms. My aileron went up five points of sub trim. My pitch servo on the other side went down three points of sub trim to level the arm. And the elevator servo had to go down 28 points of sub trim to level the arm. So that means that the elevator servo arm is the most critical or is the limiting factor in all of these servo arms. Now, it's about impossible for me to give you a shot of the elevator servo, so what I'm going to do is essentially, is essentially throw this out 28 points and we'll do the next step. 
So let me throw this out of whack and I'll be right back. So here I've got 28 points of sub trim in this servo arm and we're going toward the upper limit. So now I'm going to put in cyclic throw toward the upper limit, then we're going to put in collective pitch toward the upper limit and then see how much extra throw we have until we hit the, the hard stop of the servo arm movement. So we've got sub trim, now I either have to give right or left cyclic, right cyclic moves the arm up so there's my cyclic input. Now to put the collective pitch input I either have to go to positive or negative collective pitch and in this case I have to go to negative collective pitch. So now I've got sub trim, cyclic and collective pitch. Now I want to see how much more I can increase the collective pitch until this arm stops. So I'm at 60 percent in the swash mix or the CCPM menu and I'm increasing the pitch. Here we go. Okay, right there it stopped. There it came alive. And right there it stopped. That percentage is 75 percent. So as we set up collective pitch, I can adjust the pitch percentage from 60 to 75 percent without losing any cyclic throw at the extremes. Now I've got all three servo arms perfectly level and what we want to do now is find where the ball has to be out on the servo arm. Now I've flown the T-Rex before and I can tell you that we're going to end up on the second hole but that's not the purpose of this DVD. I'm not here to say, okay, it has to be in the second hole and you set the servo percentage to X percent. No, no, no. I want to teach you how to set up any electric helicopter in the world. And so to find the range that we need, we're going to start here, see how much collective pitch we have. If that's not enough, we'll go out another hole and see how much collective pitch we have. If that's not enough, we'll go out another hole and see how much collective pitch we have. So we have to play with these holes because that determines how much collective pitch we get. So I'm going to install a ball on the inner hole of each servo arm and then we're going to measure the collective pitch. I'll be right back. Now I've got the push rods set to the stock factory lengths and we're going to have to adjust these a little bit. But again, with all three servo arms perfectly level, I need to make the swash plate perfectly level. Now, it's down a little bit in front and up a little bit in back. I have the option of lengthening these two or shortening the rear one. Uh, because it's much easier to get to these two, I'm going to lengthen these two push rods until the swash plate is perfectly level, and I'll be right back. I lengthen these push rods three turns out. Now the swash plate is perfectly level. So now I can go ahead and add the rotor head and we can see what the collective pitch range is with the ball on the inner hole of the servo arm. As we do all of the collective pitch checks, we need a way to lock out the fly bar because of course any fly bar movement affects the pitch of the main rotor blades. So in the T-Rex, this is pretty simple. All that you need is a little piece of piano wire. This is 48 thousandths in diameter and just put a little bend on the end that will facilitate inserting it through the hub block and so you can just push that in and that effectively locks out the fly bar. Now this is the plastic fly bar carrier. For the metal fly bar carrier the piano wire will be a little smaller in diameter but you get the basic idea. When we check collective pitch we always want the rotor blades perpendicular or out to the right and left. We do this because if we put the blades longitudinally along the tail boom, when we put a little bit of right tilt into the swash plate to counter for translating tendency, that will really throw off the pitch of the blades. So we want to make sure the swash plate is level fore and aft and then check the pitch with the blades to the left and right of the helicopter. Let's see how much collective pitch we have with the ball in the inner hole of the servo arm. 
I'm still at half stick here. Let's go to full stick and excuse the back of my head here. That is basically minus seven degrees pitch. And the other way, and the other way is plus nine. So seven and nine, that's 16 degrees of pitch. We're looking for 22 degrees of pitch. Now, that is with the pitch CCPM at 60%. Remember, we can increase that to 75%. So I've got the swash mix or the CCPM menu dialed up, and I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 75, and then we're going to see how much more pitch that gave us. So again, excuse my head. Okay, that's 11 and a half degrees. And let me just write that down, 11.5. Go to the other extreme. And that is minus 8.5. So that is 20 degrees. So we're closer, but we still don't have 22 degrees of pitch. So because we don't have enough pitch, and I'm at the upper limit in the CCPM pitch menu, we need to go ahead and move the balls out one hole on all three servo arms. All right, now let's see how many degrees of pitch we have. I've reset the CCPM percentage back to 60%. So here's one extreme. And that is minus 9. Here's the other extreme. And that is 12. So 9 and 12 is 21 degrees of pitch. Now, we need one more degree of pitch to end up with 22. So off camera, I'm going to gradually increase the pitch in the CCPM menu until I get exactly 22 degrees of pitch. With my CCPM percentage set to 64%, I have minus 11 degrees of pitch and plus 11 degrees of pitch for a total of 22. Now, as I was making those adjustments, the gauge was going over 12 degrees, and so I had to lengthen these short lengths one full turn to keep the range within 12 degrees so I could read it on the pitch gauge. Now what I have to do is I need to adjust these links to get exactly plus 12 on the top which will give me minus 10 on the bottom. So I'll get as close as I can utilizing the short link and then I'll make the fine adjustment using the long link right here. As I was doing these collective pitch checks I noticed that my collective pitch was working backwards so for instance, there's full high stick at negative pitch and then low stick at positive pitch. So I'll just go into the CCPM and change the plus 64 to minus 64. At full stick, there's plus 12 degrees of pitch. And if I go to full low stick, there is exactly minus 10 degrees of pitch so the range is perfect. To get that, all that I had to do was adjust the short link by half a turn. Now, when I adjusted that a half a turn, that meant snapping this link on the hard way. So it was tough on my fingers, but again, do whatever you have to do to make it right. I did not make any adjustments to the longer link. With the pitch range on the white tipped blade perfect, now I'm going to put the pitch gauge on the black tipped blade and match it to this blade. We're going to use the travel adjust endpoints to level the swash plate at full high and full low collective pitch. To do that, we'll need a special fixture, and this is a swash plate leveling tool available from Mike Fortune of Fortune Model Products. It has a little bubble 
that says when the swash plate is out to the right and left, and here's the bubble for fore and aft. Now we have to modify it just a little bit to use it on the T-Rex 450. We have to make a little cutout so that this portion fits over the rear ball link and then take a little bit of material away here from the edges so that it doesn't contact the swash plate here. And basically the tool lays on the outer part of the swash plate here, here, and here. So I can go ahead and slide it in place. And then the sides of the tool just bump up against the ball links here and here. In the next shot, you're going to see me talk about splitting the difference between the aileron servo and the pitch servo. And I just want to clarify the reason that I do it this way. Here's a swash plate using a dinner plate. Here's the elevator pickoff, the aileron pickoff, and the pitch pickoff. If we, let's say we're talking about roll. If I just make a roll correction by taking the aileron servo and pulling it down, that is actually taking out just a touch of collective pitch. Now, admittedly, we're only going to change these percentages by a few percent, so this isn't going to be much. It just depends on how anal you want to get. For me, I go ahead and get anal for right-left, but for elevator, I just adjust that with the elevator servo and forget it. So in the shot that's coming up, you'll see me, let's say I'm raising the aileron by two percentage points, and then I will drop the pitch servo by two percentage points so the overall collective stays the same. Now the other perfectly acceptable way to do this is just go ahead and change the elevator servo and then either choose the aileron or the pitch servo and just adjust one servo to keep it simple. And then when you're all done, go to full high stick and make sure you have plus 12 degrees of pitch and then drop to full low stick and make sure you have minus 10 degrees of pitch. Now we're going to use the travel adjust to make sure that the swash plate stays level at full high collective pitch and stays level at full low collective pitch. We're doing this with the normal pitch curve all zeroed out. So in other words, we're going from minus 10 to plus 12, the full range of collective pitch. Also, we're doing this before we're mechanically adjusting the length of the push rods to tilt the swash plate a little bit to the right for translating tendency. So in other words, the swash plate is mechanically level. Now, I've shimmed the helicopter to make these bubbles perfectly level, and the stick is at half stick. You have to start at half stick, then we go to one extreme, high pitch, and the other extreme, low pitch. This check is very important because it preserves the purity of the control system in aerobatics. Now, you won't feel whether you do this or not if you're just hovering the helicopter. But once you start to do loops and rolls and 3D type of maneuvers, if you do not do this check, the helicopter will have mixing or impurity in the controls. So again, this is very important. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, you're looking at this through a mirror, and basically from just behind the main shaft looking forward, this bubble is just behind the main shaft, and this bubble is actually on the left side of the helicopter, but it appears on the right side of the helicopter because of the mirror shot. It makes no difference in the outcome. So what I've got is I've got travel adjust dialed up, and let's go. Here we're uh, at, at uh, half stick. Let's go to full high stick and see what the bubbles do. The 4F bubble has changed just a little bit, so I'm going to select elevator with my select button, and I'm simply going to beep one way or the other until the elevator comes in. Now in the theory section I said that these uh, percentages will normally be plus or minus 5%, no more than that, and there the elevator is at 98%. The roll, the right-left cyclic, looks good. Let's go back down to half stick. There, we're looking good. Now let's go to full low stick. And, woo, the elevator really moves. The cyclic moved just a little bit. Again, 
Uh, I've got elevator selected and I'm simply going to beep the elevator one way or the other until the bubble comes in. That looks pretty good. That is 95 percent. And the aileron moved a little bit. Normally what I'll do is if you only move the aileron or if you only move the pitch, that will actually add or subtract a little bit of collective pitch from the overall scheme of things. So if, we, if the aileron is out or if the right left bubble is out, what we'll do is we'll take a little bit from the aileron and a little bit from the pitch and then that way the swash plate will stay exactly level in terms of collective pitch. So anyway, let me select, uh, it looks like pitch is going to come up first. So I've got pitch selected and let me just beep until the bubble starts to come in. Okay, there the bubble is coming in. That's at 98%. So now I'll beep back over to aileron and change that 2%. And that's the wrong way. And again, you'll really see how accurate your servos are. So there, that's 102% in aileron. And the elevator looks like it moved just a little bit. I'll go back and bring in the elevator. Okay, the elevator is now at 96%. So that's full low collective pitch. Everything looks good. Let's go back 